Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about how do you do testing in Agile. It's always a big question these days. Am um, I moving away from Waterfall and I need to do my testing in Agile? How do I do this? And what can I do with WorkSoft Certify? So if we step back and look at how do you build your backlog and your sprints. Um, in Agile, traditionally you have at the highest level an epic. Epics are made of themes, and then you have stories, and then stories um, represent user workflows or different bits of functionality through the application itself. Now, um, if you look at things like Scaled Agile Framework, they may put a little more structure around it. You have a planning increment. Planning increments have features. Features have stories. Stories have tasks. Uh, if you're working with um, SAP, you may think of waves of functionality aligning to your RICEFs. Um, in both cases, what happens is multiple stories are going to work together to create something for the end user. And that could be um, a lot of times a feature level um, automation. So if I look here, I have my sales order with reference and I have material pricing as two different stories because in reality, I can't create a sales order unless I have the pricing available. Okay, and from the user's perspective, the workflow at, the, at a feature level, a little bit higher level, multiple stories working together would be that I create an order and then actually create a delivery. So in this case, when I think about my end-to-end -end testing and think about how do I validate that multiple things are working together from the user's perspective, what I need to do is write my test automation that aligns to not only creating the sales order that has material pricing behind it, those two stories working together, also my delivery process. So let's look at how this works. So what I'm going to do is come over to my sales order system. I'll activate my capture and I'm going to call this um, DP dash four because that's my uh, my story number so it's kind of easy to track back okay and I'm gonna go through I'm gonna create a sales order so ideally if you think about the way sprints work um, you get a story some acceptance criteria and then as you start working through it you have different parts of the UI coming in place so in this case the sales order is coming complete this is probably the last couple days of the sprint itself, right? And you need to document how to use the user interface, what data is there. And when we think about this is I think it's more like how am I documenting and creating my test plans and test stories from my acceptance criteria, right? Uh, so it could be everything from the date formats and, and my PO numbers are required or not. Different parts of my acceptance criteria turn into a test plan. So ideally, uh, my user, my business analyst, my QA person is going to walk through the user interface, probably the last couple days of the sprint, make sure it's working, and then when they're happy with it, they'll take a recording or a capture. Okay, and I can see here that I was able to create a sales order, right? That's the 37083. Um, and I may go put a comment in here and say, this is a successful sales order. Maybe I want to use this for training or something, right? So I can put my annotations over here and I'll stop my capture. So this could be one sprint team and they're working over here in the new SAP GUI and what we want them to do is go push these to analyze and start building out my stories, right? So I'll push this into analyze and then it'll become available, right? Now um, another thing could happen in parallel. So I'll just move this out of the way and um, if I look and analyze I see I've started to build my story here. I had my, my DP4 and I've got my home. I'm creating my sales order, right? Well, the other thing that could happen is another team needs to take this sales order and they need to build the delivery for it. So in this case, maybe that team's working with SAP GUI and instead of going through and doing these things by hand and recording them, what they want to do is they want to build a a Gherkin file. So they could actually say put in say their um, sales orders, they put in their dates, their warehouses and that and then what they want to do 
is instead of working in the capture, they want to do syntax. My scenario is credent delivery with reference. And the sales order has to exist and it's known. They want to take a screenshot, they click the sales save button, they look for it has been saved to make sure it works, right? So that's a valid way to build a test also. So if we think about this other sprint team, um, they could be working that way. So that team is going to go pick up the cucumber converter and what they're going to do is they're going to load that gherkin and now the syntax is valid. It didn't turn yellow. There's a specific demo on this if you want more details of how this works and they're going to generate their capture file. Okay, So I'll go browse my disk and throw it over here. And now I've got my scenario saved. So how would this look in an Agile delivery? Well, ideally, um, I would go upload this capture into um, WorkSoft. So I'm going to go grab my scenario and upload it. And what will happen now is I'll get my two different stories working together to create a feature. So Ideally, what happens is one sprint team is working along on the sales orders and the other person's working on the deliveries. Other people are setting up the pricing. And what we need to do is join those to build automation. So ideally, this create sales order goes into the delivery. So I'll just click these together. And then I'm going to say connect these activities. So now I have a connected activity. I've got my order to my delivery. And I can do two things. I can go create my documentation. And so this is the feature for my dry chain delivery. And I'll create that as a PDF. And the other thing I can do is I can go create my automation. So so ideally what happens is my team start collaborating together. One team was working in the sprint, and on the last two days of their sprint, when their sales order came complete, they created these steps. A different team was working in parallel, and they're working in SAP GUI, and they're going to do the deliveries. Because maybe their warehouse still uses the SAP GUI client, where the other people are using the new Fiori client, right? So what I've done is I've drawn them together to create my end-to-end -end process. This is my feature. I've created a gen doc, and I've created automation. So I now have documentation of the process, which shows me all the different fields and what I've interacted with, and think this is great for training. It's the concept of taking my requirements um, or my acceptance criteria and describing them as a test plan. How would I navigate through here? How will this work together? And then I've created my automation so then I can run my tests. So two different teams could be working together and then people are responsible for automation at the feature level. Maybe it's your center of excellence people. Your people are interested in overall end-to-end -end testing to make sure all these stories are coordinated. They're going to take this test and then run it to make sure the end-to-end -end processes are working. So this is an example of how different teams working together in Agile can work on stories independently. And then when they come to build their validation or their tests, one person could use Capture, another person could use their Gherkins, whatever they're comfortable with join those two stories together at a feature level and then we'll go automate the, the validation of it and we'll get our continuous testing and continuous delivery really running well. Thanks a lot.